So here the insulation and the risers are completed on their install. I wanted to show you at this point because I'm going to cover it with rocks and with a uh, weed barrier. So it's going to be, you can't see it there, it's going to be covered, but you just move the rocks over and you'll have access to them. So here it is as installed and it's going to be not be able to be seen. I still have to do some rock separation over there and the rocks on the right are complete and finish out this. So this is the final product and the rest of the video is going to explain to you how to do this. This covers the base install, and when you're doing the, you have uh, this, which is the 24 or 20 inch base right here. It fills out the flange right, right here, and it's got parts that go over. Originally, I had all the dirt out back to where you can see it over there. And with a kit, with a, things, two things I replaced and switched out is one is the foam. I replaced it with uh, butyl sealant tape. Uh, this you can find like five bucks for this. I used one and a half of these just to make it really thick. Wrapped it around the same layer that you see in all the videos for these and, uh, and used that right there. Uh, the other thing is the uh, screw downs for this are not really that great. They come with the kit. So I ended up using some tap cons. I went with the stainless steel quarter and one through fourths. Probably better than the blue and the whites just because uh, peace of mind. Be sure to use their drill. It's only like six bucks, and because uh, these drill bits are a little sized a little differently than masonry drill bits, just deal with the tapcon. Tapcons are pretty easy. They screw in uh, to spread up the pressure. I used what's called a fender washer. It's like a regular washer, except for it's bigger for the quarter inch size, and made sure it's stainless steel. Stainless steel with all this thing, a lot of regs and a lot of it, it just won't rust on you. Uh, when I'm done with that, it's like so I have the butyl in there. Screw it down. Uh, something interesting over here is that on this side, these two have been uh, screwed in here, not in the original holes. Uh, the edge, you can't see it, but the edge of the, uh, the tank, it goes in here. These are on the tank, but they're so close to the edge, I didn't want to install them, so I just installed them in here. And it's since I'm using the 20 on the outside, and then I ended up putting butyl around here. So this thing, is st they're still outside the uh, envelope right there, but they're also stainless too. So that's what I did when installing this. Uh, because of this install, it's going to be winterized. I'm keeping this open right here for right now. I'm going to use a polyethylene expanding foam. And so what it is to keep it, I'm in a colder environment up in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, So here I've laid the first layer of butyl on this right here. You see it doesn't have to be perfect, but it, what it does is it has to be flush and flat to the surface all the way around right there. And then I'm going to add a second level at this going there on this. So this level is just going to sit right on this. Uh, make sure it doesn't fold so you're keeping like the same direction and everything. And also that the surfaces are clean, that this and what you're going to attach it to are clean. Those are the two important things. It's just like putting on the base layer, is you got to make sure that your septic top is clean and also the bottom of your base layer is clean too when you do it. Parts about risers. Uh, this is the three inch riser from Polylock. They make two, six, and threes and six. Uh, this three though, it comes with a pan, which I cut out. So I cut it out and then I could pry it open along the edge. You could also, it's already pre-scored, you could, so you could cut out with the utility knife fairly easily. That's because I'm putting it in here. That way this, when, if we ever have to get access to it, this is not the uh, drain access over here. This is actually the entrance access. So this, for some reason, this is missing right here. You can see the handle. Right here, it rusted off, so I'm just gonna leave it unless we this thing gets clogged, then we gotta open it up and uh, do it then. But until then, I'm just gonna leave this on here. I removed it right there. There's also a two inch, three inch uh, uh, direct drainage or drainage direct. They're the ones I bought it from. Uh, they were the cheapest when it came to everything. A shout out to them though, because uh, 
to get level with this and keep this hidden underneath the dirt here, or underneath the, at the dirt level, underneath the rocks that we're going to go on here, what it is is that this, uh, they sent me out the three one, even though I ordered the six kits, so they did it for free, so that's a shout out for them. They're also the cheapest too. Uh, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to add a layer of butyl right around here, and I'll do that in person, which is similar to what I did uh, to the base, except for the base, I did it I did it outside, upside down, and then did it on there. You can see other videos have that right there. So I'm going to show you that butyl. The reason why you do the butyl is that some municipalities require these things to be watertight. You also don't water going in. This one is uh, fairly, this one's actually covered overhead, so we don't have a lot of uh, water getting in. But the problem is if you have it out in the field, you could have water coming from the outside, then you got to process more water, and then your leach fill has to deal with that extra, extra water to process. So I decided to add some insulation to the top of the septic tank. The reason for this is that it's only about uh, about four inches of dirt on it, and dirt has about an R value of 0.1 to 0.25. The lower it is, the more moisture it is. and It's pretty moist here, so I'm thinking it's more like a 0.1. Say if you have about 24 inches, you don't have to do it in most conditions. Of course, the further you move north, it's uh, where you have permafrost, it becomes a different deal. So I'll talk about quick about the four different types of uh, insulation that you can use for this. The first two types is uh, the one I'm using is the cheap stuff. It's uh, EPS, and that is expanded polystyrene. Uh, so you can tell, tell is that the one you break off, and they have the little balls of white in there. And you see them right there from me cutting it. And so this is the cheapest. It's got about an R value of four. Uh, so the inch and a half uh, using excuse me an R value of six. That's about uh, $20 for the sheet right there. And I cut it up. Uh, the next type is you get it about an R value of five is XPX, which is extruded polystyrene. It's, uh, you see it at blue board, sometimes it's pink. And that's uh, polystyrene that's been, uh, it's a continuous closed cell versus the individual closed cells that are stuck together. And uh, the only disadvantage to that one is that it's a little more expensive, but it also retains moisture more easily because it doesn't dry as quickly as the uh, EPS does. So, probably not a big deal because it's going to be in a moist environment, so it'll always be. And XPS can actually, if it's moist for longer because of the cell structure, it can actually uh, lower the R value more. So it can drop in a really wet environment. The other two types we have is uh, polyurethane and we have polyiso. These are different because they're closed cells but with gas. And gas, get, since it's air instead of a solid, it gives you a um, higher R value. So polystyrene is about, uh, sorry, polyurethane is about 6, 6 R per an inch. And polyiso can be from 6.5 to 6.6. Uh, polyiso is the most expensive. And the problem with polyiso is that there's two different classes. A lot of times they get what's called glass filled. And that's your class two, and you have a class one, which is the one that's really good at not retaining water. Uh, however, a lot of them are going to be class twos that you get at the big box stores. So those are the choices right there of the four different types you can use. I end up doing the extruded, the cheap stuff. And with this, I'm actually, uh, you see the silver side this is going to be up in this situation. Uh, so normally you have this, this is a solar reflector. It use it for two different things. If you're on the top of a roof, uh, use it to because you're trying to keep heat out. What it is is that's going to reflect it outwards. Uh, when you do it underground, for most of the time, when they have these things on the uh, in like say a basement or on the on the slab, and it's actually the white side up because you're trying to reflect the heat in. In this situation, we're trying to reflect the heat down, so this is why it's going to be silver side up install. Right now, I'm just waiting for it to dry off. I want to get the most moisture off of it. I had to clean, had to clean it off and sprayed it because I did some uh, repair work right there. I did some quick write on some uh, cracks that were shoddily repaired previously. So that's just talking about that right there. Uh, you can tell the two different risers right here. It's, uh, the, that's the two inch one riser on the left. 
This one on the right is a three inch riser. The ground's a little higher here on the right, a little lower on the left. And the goal was to keep these, uh, it's gonna be ended up with uh, rocks on top, is to be double with the dirt, but hidden by the rocks. So that way it's easy to go. So the last thing I want to talk about is insulating. And if you're down in like Texas or a southern state, you probably don't need to do this, but up in the Pacific Northwest, we have uh, pretty cold winters. And while these tanks won't necessarily freeze, what's going to happen is that you're going to end up getting so cold is that uh, your bacteria will stop working, your scum layer is going to start growing and might overcome and the bacteria might die out or be in that for so long that your scum level will end up clogging it. Uh, that's why in the winter time they talk about making sure you run the water every once in a while to keep warm water in there. And uh, the good thing is here is that when you have a riser, you lose the insulation that's naturally in the ground. Uh, our values of earth is actually pretty low because it's, uh, moist, it's moist earth. Uh, however, it's a lot higher than air is though. So, you know, this right here, the goal of this is just to replace it and maybe augment it a little bit. But then so what you want is that the regular dirt sit on this, which is about 12 inches, which is a little low for, or sorry, it's not even 12 inches, it's like six or seven inches, but it's really close to the structure right here. And it is covered on the top, uh, but it's pretty low. Uh, if, if I was redoing this whole thing, uh, I'd probably put insulation on it from the get-go just, just to keep it warmer during the winter. Uh, it just means that we have to pump it out more because we have the winter. So I want to mitigate it as much. So on this particular polylock, I'm going to insulate it. There's a, this is an exit right here where the filter is. This one's already complete. And so I'm going to do two things. One is the ring that you see on the outside, which is going to be the ring between the 20-inch and the 24-inch the ring right there. So I'm going to fill it up to the top of the riser, up to this point right here. And then on the inside, right here, is I'm filling this with foam. I'm using uh, just the great stuff. It's the cheap the cheap stuff. It's uh, closed cell polyurethane foam. Uh, it's our value of about six. Closed cell is resistance to water, which is going to help. Uh, you know, there's a lot of water in there. It's going to get this a little bit, especially with the condensation, and it goes and it hits uh, cooler air. But it'll be a lot better than nothing. Polyurethane doesn't break down, so it'll last probably as long as this. So here's the cells I've already filled, and it's interesting, I already filled them only to about that, about like this layer right here, but this is the expansion there. So that's what, when you're doing this stuff, you don't want to fill them up so much. So this right here, about that right there, we'll fill it up to here, probably higher. And then I'm gonna go through like the little areas right here that I see is a, they could use a tiny bit more and go fill those. It's really, you know, this is not the weakest point anymore for, uh, they're the weakest, it's the weakest insulated point anymore. But just try to do it nice. It's probably overdoing it a lot, but I'm gonna go finish this out. So I only had about uh, six or five inches of soil on top of this, so I figured I needed to uh, insulate it. So I ended up choosing the lower R value stuff, the uh, EPS. I used a one inch sheet and then a one and a half inch sheet. It gives me an R value about just over nine from that, and then another layer of dirt in the rocks. It'll put it right at 10, and I was trying to go for an R value about 10. Uh, that's what I got recommended for the environment I'm in. If you're further north, you probably want a little more. If you're south, then if you're in like, you know, if you're in like the Texas Hill Country, you don't really need anything. So I used that and I sealed it with uh, polyurethane, great stuff. I ended up using two of the uh, two of the bottles of it to go and fill the cracks and all that. And uh, if you notice, I'm putting it so the silver the reflective side is up. And what that is, that's the reflective side will aim the heat down. That's how you usually do it. Usually see it installed the other way around because you're trying to keep the heat inside a basement or uh, the other way is that if it's a hot day you're trying to reflect it out and that's when you see it on top of uh, buildings and stuff like that. So this is what it is and I'm just going to let the foam dry and then close it up.